We start by noting that sine pi x is negative when x lies between minus 1 and 0 because pi x lies in the third or fourth quadrant when x is in that range. Similarly, sine pi x is positive when x lies between 0 and 1 because pi x is in the first or second quadrant when x is in that range. And finally, sine pi x is negative when x lies between 1 and 3 upon 2 because pi x lies in the third quadrant when x is in that range. This implies that x times sine pi x is positive when x lies between minus 1 and 0 because both x and sine pi x are negative in that range. x sine pi x is positive when x lies between 0 and 1 because both x and sine pi x are positive when x is in that range. And finally, x times sine pi x is negative when x lies between 1 and 3 upon 2 because x is positive and sine pi x is negative when x is in that range. And therefore, it follows that x times sine pi x is positive when x lies between minus 1 and 1 and negative when x lies between 1 and 3 upon 2. Therefore, the given integral, let's denote it by i, can be broken into two components. The first component is integral minus 1 to 1 modulus of x sine pi x dx and the second component is integral 1 to 3 upon 2 modulus of x sine pi x dx. Now between minus 1 and 1 x sine pi x is positive therefore modulus x sine pi x can be replaced with x sine pi x and when x lies between 1 and 3 upon 2 x sine pi x is negative and therefore modulus x sine pi x can be replaced with minus x times sine pi x dx. Now let's denote x sine pi x by fx. Therefore f of minus x is equal to minus x times sine of minus pi x. Sine of minus pi x is equal to minus sine pi x and therefore f of minus x is equal to x times sine pi x which is equal to fx. Therefore f of minus x is equal to fx which implies that fx is an even function. And therefore, using properties of definite integral, we can say that integral minus 1 to 1 fx dx is equal to 2 times integral 0 to 1 fx dx. Therefore, the first term in the expression for i above can be written as 2 times integral 0 to 1 x sine pi x dx. The second term remains as is, which is integral 1 to 3 upon 2 minus x sine pi x dx. Now we integrate by parts to evaluate integral x sine pi x dx. This is equal to x times the integral of sine pi x which is minus cos pi x upon pi minus integral of the integral of sine pi x which is minus cos pi x upon pi times the derivative of x which is 1. This simplifies to minus x cos pi x upon pi plus sine pi x upon pi square. Using this result, the value of i is equal to 2 times in brackets minus x cos pi x upon pi plus sine pi x upon pi square the limits are 0 and 1 minus in brackets minus x cos pi x upon pi plus sine pi x upon pi square and the limits here are 1 and 3 upon 2 putting in the limits the value of i is equal to 2 times in brackets minus cos pi upon pi plus sine pi upon pi square minus in brackets 0 plus 0. Minus the second term in brackets we have minus 3 upon 2 pi cos 3 pi upon 2 plus 1 upon pi square times sine of 3 pi upon 2 minus in brackets minus cos pi upon pi plus sine pi upon pi square. Now sine pi is equal to 0 and cos 3 pi upon 2 is equal to 0 and therefore the value of i simplifies to minus 2 upon pi times cos pi minus 1 upon pi square times sine 3 pi upon 2 minus cos pi upon pi. Now cos pi is equal to minus 1 and sine 3 pi upon 2 is equal to minus 1. And therefore the value of i is equal to minus 3 upon pi times minus 1 minus 1 upon pi square times minus 1 and this simplifies to 3 upon pi plus 1 upon pi square which is the required answer.